Hey there, it's Christian, and in this video, I'm going to show you the method that I use to connect Capture to Grandimate 2. This works for a bunch of different scenarios, whether you're using a hardware console and you want to connect it to Capture running on a separate computer, or if you want to connect Capture to Grandimate 2 on PC running on the same computer, or different computers, or a MacBook and a PC, or a MacBook and a console, this method will work for all of those scenarios, and that's why I like to use it. First of all, you're going to need enough parameters unlocked to control your show. And if you haven't seen my video on parameters in the MA2 system, go ahead and, and check out the little thing on the screen there. That'll take you to my video where I explain how, how parameters work. In addition to that, you're also going to need an active network connection for your local area network on your computer. Here we can see the network connections window inside of Windows with my various network adapters listed in here. So I've got one for internet and then I have another one here for my local lighting network. That's the uh, network adapter on this computer that is connected to the rest of the lighting stuff in my little home studio here. If you're not sure how to get to the network connections window, a real simple way to do it is right click on the start button, go to network connections, and scroll down to change adapter options. Keep in mind for this to work, uh, this has to be an active connection. It can't have a cable unplugged. Uh, right now I just have it plugged into my network switch that is connected to the rest of my gear. Now I just need to go into the properties for the adapter, go to the TCP IPv4 properties, uh, and make sure that I have my static IP assigned in here. Uh, in Windows you can assign multiple um, IP addresses to a single physical network card. Um, I just use this formatting because it makes sense for my local setup here. Um, you can set this to anything that works with your network configuration. If you go down to advanced, you can also see that I have a couple of, of different IP addresses um, and subnets assigned in here. Once we have a static IP assigned, we just need to make sure that Capture and MA can communicate with that adapter. So here we are in Capture. This is Capture 2021, but this method will work for all modern versions of Capture. I think all the way back to uh, Argo or Polar even. So we'll go into Options, go to the Connectivity tab, and we can scroll and see that there is an option for MANet. And you can see that that IP address with the name of the network adapter is listed here. Um, Automatic usually works, but I tend to go through and make sure all of my static IPs are assigned where I expect them to be assigned um, so it doesn't have to do any guessing. So I'll go ahead and select that IP address that we just set. And when you make any changes in Capture, it's going to ask you to restart it. Meanwhile, we'll pop over into MA, and this is just my uh, kind of partial show read and prep file that I use for, for any show that I'm doing. Um, we'll go into Setup. And in the top right, MA Network Control. You can see on the left here, we have uh, the sessions window with no active sessions. All we have is this not connected line, which um, is convenient for seeing stations that are physically connected to your network, but aren't a part of your session or any of the other sessions listed on the left. The major difference between doing this on a console and doing this on an on-PC station is right here with this station IP window. On consoles, you'll be able to type in an IP address. You can also do this through the command line. Um, but on on-PC, you don't have the ability to type in an IP, but you do have access to a list of all of the IP addresses, um, static and dynamic, that are assigned to um, your, your network. Uh, adapters that are connected, uh, even virtual ones. You see here we've got 127001, that's the loopback adapter. Unfortunately, although loopback adapter is, um, is useful in some cases, it doesn't work for this method. So we'll have to use that 192.168.0.101 IP that we set up in our IPv4 settings earlier. Station priority doesn't really matter here. Just make sure that it is set to at least low, because if you set it to never, you won't even be able to create a session. Session name and password do not matter. Um, if, even if you have a password set, Capture will still be able to read the session data um, without having to enter it. So don't worry about that. All we have to do now is simply create the session. And once we do that, we'll see that session ID number one shows up here. And it also shows that, yes, the station that we are currently at is connected to 
the session, and it is the master station of the session. We're all done in this window, and we can see that our red broken heart in our uh, message center has changed to a blue heart, indicating that the station is the master. Uh, but we are still met with the uh, the great little parameters restriction um, icon. You know, it says you do not have enough parameters, and we can double check this by going back into setup, going instead to patch only live. Uh, you can see that all of our patched fixtures up here are using 645 parameters. There's a couple of ways that are counted against you here that don't actually count against you here, um, but 645 is like the estimate. And we can see that with our current session, we have zero available parameters. So to fix that, I am going to add in my MA1 NSP, which grants me 2,048 parameters. Um, so I'm going to go over into uh, network configuration. This is different. This is right below. Uh, so go into MA network configuration. Let's see that we have no consoles. We just have on PC. If we did have a command wing connected, that would also give us parameters or a fader wing, but we don't. The only thing that I have connected to this network is a NSP, which we can add under DMX node. So if I go ahead and hit add present, it is now a part of this session. We see green lines. It's a good sign. And if we go back over into patch only live, now we can see that we have our available parameters 2048. Last thing we want to check here is the DMX list and make sure that this requested column is set to on, which will then grant you output on those universes. So since we have a show that is far under our parameter license here, we get access to all the universes, meaning that we can patch lights in any of these universes all the way up to our parameter uh, limit. That means if we hop back over into Capture, we should be able to go over to our Universes tab here and click on More, go to Configure MA Net, and then this little text box here with the number one in it refers to the session ID number that we put in when we started the session. So we left it at one. Usually you'll find it just as one, but if for whatever reason your session ID is different, you'll change that here. Click on Start. And then this is a good sign. When you see that the start has changed to a stop, that means that it is connected and working. So if we close out, we can see that our patch base is now one to one. So universe one in capture is universe one in MA. Now, I don't need to change that for this show, but just keep in mind that if you're doing any sort of clever universe offsetting, if you're like programming a template stage, make sure that you are patching with the correct universe offset. So a lot of times, like in my template show file, I start at universe, uh, I think, 231. And so if I needed to make sure that uh, the visualizer was patched at universe 1, I would need to select that universe and scroll all the way down to universe 231 out of MA. And that's like kind of the nice thing about parameters and being able to patch things wherever you want. And it's also nice if you change any sort of external universe settings or assignments in this window. Uh, when you save the capture file, it will remember those MANET universe offsets. It's a nice little bonus. It didn't used to do that. It was super annoying for a while. So I think that's only more modern. Now that we're connected, we should have full control. So I'm going to switch one of these views over into live mode. And I'll open up MA. And let's... Uh, See if we have any control here. Get rid of this guy. I hit go on our stage. And look at that. We do have control. So we have control of the rig. We've got our specials working. And we've got our cue list fading. It's a nice little uh, <laughs> fade on the, on the color wheel there. Totally intentional. Of course, there are other ways to connect Capture to MA or any other control software using ArtNet or streaming ACN or CITP. But I find that this is a really foolproof way to do it with MA2. It's nice because if you're using MA, you probably already have a session set up. And that's 2 thirds of the battle right there. And then all you have to do is just point Capture at that session and start reading the data. Remember, though, this is just one-way communication. So Capture can't send data back to MA. It is just reading the DMX output from those universes.
Well, I hope you enjoyed this video. If you wanna watch a version of this same exact tutorial, but without my face or voice narrating it, I've left a link. It's actually the first link down below in the description for you to enjoy. That said, thank you so much for watching and I hope to see you in the next video.